Where did he get this wisdom and strength? Is he not the carpenter's son? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, our mother, the Church, invites us, her children, to reflect on the hidden and secret life of our Savior. Those 30 years he lived in obscurity at Nazareth with Mary and Joseph before he began his public ministry with his baptism in the Jordan. Truly thou art a hidden God, Isaiah prophesied. Our divine Redeemer, having taken our human flesh at the Incarnation, desired to share in each and every aspect of our human life other than sin. Christ was truly a little child, a child who ate, drank, and slept, and played like any other. In his humility, Christ hid his divine nature and was mistaken by his fellow townsfolk as nothing other than the carpenter's son. At Nazareth, only Mary and Joseph knew the true identity of the child Jesus. In the humble and poor house at Nazareth, attached to the workshop of St. Joseph, the creator of the universe, willed to pass a simple and humble life. The splendor of the Eternal Father did not wish anything to distinguish him from the children of men. He, uncreated wisdom from on high, the divine teacher, truth itself, wished to learn from Mary and Joseph, his creatures, the ordinary details of our human existence. Mary taught him the rudiments of their language and religious tradition. Joseph taught the divine child how to handle the tools in the workshop where Christ watched attentively, where he learned and obeyed. Pope Leo XIII, in establishing this feast, tells us, there in secret dwelt the Son of Righteousness until the time when he should shine out in full splendor in the sight of all. There Christ, our God and Savior, lived with his Virgin Mother and with most blessed Joseph, who held him the place of a father. No one can doubt that in this holy family was displayed every virtue which can be called forth by an ordinary home life with its mutual services of charity, its holy exchanges, and its practices of piety, since the Holy Family was destined from all eternity to be a pattern for all others. For that very reason, it was established by the merciful designs of Providence that every Christian, in every walk of life, and in every place, might easily, if he would but give heed, have before him a motive and a pattern to live a good life, to all fathers of families, St. Joseph is indeed the best model of paternal vigilance and care. In the Most Holy Virgin, mothers may find an excellent example of love, modesty, resignation, and the perfection of faith. And in Jesus, who was subject to Mary and Joseph, children of the family have a divine pattern of obedience, which they can admire, reverence, and imitate. Indeed, among Christian families, nothing more solitary nor efficacious can be imagined than the example of the Holy Family, where are to be found all domestic virtues in perfection and completeness. When Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are invoked in the home, charity is likely to be maintained in the family through their example and heavenly aid. A good influence is thus exerted over the conduct of all. The practice of virtue is incited, and the hardships which we all encounter are both mitigated and made easier to bear. In today's epistle, St. Paul gives us a list of virtues, all exemplified by the Holy Family, which we must imitate if we are to make our families truly holy as well. Put ye on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, the bowels of mercy, benignity, humility, modesty, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If any have a complaint against another, even as the Lord hath forgiven you, so do you also. 
and above all these things, have charity. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, in the sermon read at this morning's Office of Matins, exhorts us to imitate that supreme example of obedience given to us by the Savior. Learn, O man, to obey. Learn, O earth, to be subject. Learn, O dust, to submit. The evangelist speaking of thy Creator saith, and he was subject to them. And there is no doubt that this shows us that God was subject to Mary and Joseph. Shame on you, ye pride entities of dust and ashes. God abases himself, and you, O creature, exalt thyself. God makes himself subject to man, and to you, who are always so eager to lord it over others, set yourself up to lord it over your Creator. For as often as I desire preeminence over others, so often I strive to excel God himself. For of Christ it was said, and he was subject to them. Let us then ask Mary and Joseph to intercede for us with their divine Son, that we, being strengthened and refreshed by the Most Holy Eucharist, may ever imitate the example of the Holy Family, so that that ultimate hour of our death, with the glorious Virgin Mary and St. Joseph welcoming us, we may be found worthy to be received into our everlasting home. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't forget to click subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future videos.